Hey everyone, Anthony for Before Diesel. This is going to be a reasonably quick video and if you want to know more information, there is a playlist that covers lots of information for this. What is this? I've noticed a lot of questions, a lot of chit chat about the load reading, okay? So the load reading, see on the scan gauge there, the bottom left, it's on 17 at the moment. So what I'm going to do for the new people that don't know this or the people that, you know, have seen this is the first video of ours that they've seen. Um, we're just going to quickly go through that. We're going to give you a bit of an indication whether you've got a 120 Prada, 150 Prada, 1KD, 1GD, 1KZ, whatever, auto, manual, petrol. And this is also relevant for other diesel engines. It's just you need to work out what's normal. And to find out what normal is, you could plug a scan gauge or something like this into the vehicle when it's new and see what the reading is because that would be normal. And, of course, once it goes outside that. Now... It's not, it's an indication on a lot of vehicles when a lot of things could be wrong, like injectors worn, that sort of thing. But some vehicles, the load reading won't change much. So if the load reading isn't right, there's a good chance that the load reading, uh, you know, the injectors need replacement. But if the load reading is okay, it doesn't mean that the injectors are okay. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? So the load reading, if it's okay, your injectors might not be okay, but if the load reading's really bad, then your injectors are probably really bad. Now, let me just quickly run through it. Using the 120 as an example, because it's really a perfect reading to be able to look and judge um, the injectors and where they're at. So with the older common rail diesels, not just the one, obviously we specialize in the 1KD FTV. <coughs> um, it, look, it's a really good way to keep an eye on your injectors. If you've got a 150, it's not going to help you too much. Now, like I said, if you want to know a lot more information on the load reading and all the other readings to look at, we've got a playlist there called, I think it's called Diagnostics, Injector Diagnostics, something along those lines. We've got about, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 playlists. Just go to our YouTube channel, 4 Before Diesel, go down to the playlists, and then you can check through those subheadings. You'll work it out. Now, let's, I suppose, start off with the 120 because that's what we're in. And the 120 diesel in the 1kd with a five-speed auto is the most common and yes the auto auto or manual it does make a difference so we'll quickly run through that we'll run through the differences with the four and five and six speed autos and the different engines okay so 120 1kd five-speed auto from about sometime in 2006 through to 2009 when it changed to the 150 the first thing you'll notice here we're in park or neutral whatever way you want to look at it the coolant temp's not all the way up to 80 yet, but it will be in a moment, and 70, 80 degrees is enough to get a pretty accurate reading on the loads. The first note you need to take is the load reading will be much higher with a cold engine. Now, one thing I've done on purpose here as well, you'll see it fluctuating. Listen for the click of the aircon compressor, and this is a very important part of the video because people are going, oh, load, what's that? What's that mean? What does that mean? Well. Let's keep it really simply. The load reading is made up from different readings from different sensors, but to save confusion, just think of it exactly by what the meaning of the word load means. So you put a load on an engine, that is, you put it in drive, you press the accelerator, it's, if there's a load, it's trying to increase speed. You add a trailer, you put more weight there. The more load on the engine, the more you accelerate, the more you're gonna increase the load on the engine, okay? So it's a number of different readings that all comes together and it's a really helpful reading. So if you haven't worked out already, this engine's in really good condition. It's a 1KD engine um, with the injectors are really good. We're talking about four years old, so they're as good as new still at the moment. You can see when the air con compressor cuts out, the load reading is down on 11 at almost full operating temp, which will be 83 degrees when we get there. Compressor cuts in, you're looking around the 18, give or take, you know. These readings are never gonna be exactly accurate, right? You could see anything from 10, 11, 12. Some vehicles for odd reasons, some 120 Priders with five-speed auto might just end up being 14 or 15 with new injectors. There's a few other factors at play that can vary that. You might say have one in 10 vehicles that have that slightly different reading. Now, let's just jump across to the manual and that covers the 121 KDs. Now the manual, it's got less load because it hasn't got a torque converter bolted to the flywheel. So there's less weight there therefore reducing the load number by about three units, two or three units roughly. I'm not going by the books here, I'm going by what I see on the ground, 
what I see with new engines, old engines, new injectors, old injectors, and a heap of experience, autos, manuals, the whole lot, right? So a, a brand new good set of injectors, if these are 11, then in a manual it's gonna be around eight or nine. It's gonna drop down a little bit because the engine's still spinning the weight of the torque converter when the compressor's cut out. Compressor comes in, it's about to happen any second, there it is, bang, up to about 18, okay. Same thing when they're at the high end of the reading. So I've said in these engines, about 16 your limit, 16, 17 max. And what I'm saying is that doesn't mean your engine's about to bite. What that means is that's the end of the life for your injectors. I'm not gonna go on too much about it. Let's just check that other playlist. Let's quickly step across to the, the Hilux, okay? Let's just go to the Hiluxes from the start. So the earlier one, the one without the EGR cooler and a manual, you're gonna see similar readings to this. The auto, the four speed auto, you're gonna see similar again, similar again, maybe a little bit lower. To be honest, it's been a while since I've taken any notice, so I'm starting to forget. It's really testing my memory to remember what I wanna tell you about. But the torque of it is gonna be a bit smaller with the four speed auto, so the load reading might be a little bit lower. Same thing with the manual. It's gonna be a little bit lower, just like the 120 Prado. So you could almost say the 120 Prado and the Hilux, up until September 09, are both gonna have about the same story for you. Where the story changes a lot is when the 1KD goes into the 150 Prado, okay? It's a, to it's a different injector, it's different software package. There's a lot of things very, very different. And I've said it before, diagnostic is all almost always a waste of time. Now the normal load reading is gonna be around the 15 mark, and I've said it before, it's quite common that the load reading's 14.9 to 15.2 but there's a lot of vehicles that are 12.9 or anything in between, and some of them are at 16. So you put new injectors in and they're around 17, 18, but later on sometimes they usually they settle down to 15, but sometimes they don't. So on the 150s, you've got this big variation from about on the auto, the five speed auto, around the 12 to 13 mark, through all the way through to 17 and 18, which could be normal. If you've got new injectors, take note of what it is when you put them in, because that's normal for your vehicle. Keep an eye on it. Come back to this video later and put in the comments if three months later it came from 18 down to 14.9, like you said. I'd love to see that feedback. I'll be looking at the comments. Okay. Um, manual, same thing. Subtract about three. If the uh, if the auto is 15, then you're going to see 12 on your manual. Okay. Simple stuff, right? Now, the problem you got is when the injectors are old and worn and those nozzle needles are worn and they're not working quite right, you're not really going to see anything in your readings whatsoever. It's a combination of the injectors are better, they do last longer, plus the last of the last have got the full DLC injectors, which are really good injectors, they last a long time. The other factor you've got to keep into account for when you change your injectors is not just that they're worn fog, they're not working right, it's the injector seat life, which we know the engineers design them to be changed every 40,000 Ks. We recommend against that because of the risk of contamination, which is in bold writing in the workshop manual from the same engineers. You know, risk of contamination is high, be very careful. So all these things have got to be taken into account. And the full DLC injectors, you can probably push them out around the 200,000 K mark. There's a lot of variables there because sometimes people they are noisy at 150k, the nozzle needles are worn if they've done hard work, lots of towing, maybe some dirty fuel, blah, 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 this sort of thing. And they get a bit noisy and you put new injectors in and all that and people go, oh, that's heaps better, it's heaps quieter. They're getting better fuel economy. So it's harder to detect. Also, the software's better. Like a computer, the newer the computer, the better things work usually, right? Um, new, you know, faster, bang, bang. It's not laggy, oh, it's all laggy. Oh, this is old and laggy. It's not old and laggy anymore, right? It's not an old laggy 120. We love the old laggy 120, but the 150s are quieter, less laggy as far as you know, that sort of talk goes on the injectors, that sort of thing. But the problem is it really hides the problem and you don't see the feedback values going out. You don't see the injection volume going up. The main, it's really hard to detect. So it's worth a quick plug in every now and then. I probably wouldn't even bother every year because you're wasting your time for the most part. So there you go, guys. I just wanted to really um, explain that load value that works really well on the 1KDs up to September 09. The 1GD, you can have a look in that diagnostic playlist or under our 1GD videos. I've done videos where I've shown what the normal load reading is. 
you'll find it's very similar to this engine right here from memory. Again, I'm going from memory, so I could be wrong, but I believe the load reading on a good set of injectors on a fresh engine is down around the 10. Let me know in the comments what yours is or what your new car was, or if you find it in the diagnostic playlist for me, let us know in the comments which video and what it is. And same thing, the aircon's got to come in and it's going to go up. We might do another video on the 1GD we've got there and like a 1KD for 50,000 or 100,000 Ks, all the readings are gonna stay the same for a long time, probably even longer. But you can go and have a look at yours now if you've done 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, whatever. What the readings are at that point in time is nobody's taking fuel pipes off, anything like that. There's gonna be no contaminants, it's gonna be all normal. Now, the last thing I wanna say, I wanna add a little bit of information on the scan gauge here. It's not sponsored by scan gauge. They haven't asked me to say anything and there's no cash for comment. It's just what I use. I've used them for many years. Um, I'm happy for them to send me um, devices to trial and test, but I will tell you the truth about what you should use. And I'll tell you the reasons what I've chosen. I've got scan gauge in our Hilux 1KD Auto and a scan gauge in our 121KD Auto. I prefer it's a bit cheaper. You only program it once because of course we want the trans temp. It's a bit of a pain to program, but you only do it once. It's small and compact, so it makes it a bit easier to fit in somewhere. These are the positives. On the newer vehicles, they've got more sensors. People want to know EGT temps. And of course, the 1GD's got that. It's nice to have the bigger screen. It fits nine things per screen. You swipe across, you've got three screens. So you've got 27 readings. You've got heaps of sensors on that engine, heaps of technology, and heaps of possible problems. But if you've got one, that's what we've got on our 1GD. I really like it. I've got it mounted just up on top of the dash up here. I'm considering changing it over to the center of the dash here on the 1GD, but on the Hilux and the, so 1KD, I would stick with this, but each to their own. Depends how much money you've got. Depends if you've got a place to put it. You've also got to take into account these can plug in at the back and the side. I'm pretty sure the one on the, uh, the, the scan gauge, the next one, the three, I think it only plugs in the back from memory, but really check the videos. We've got a whole separate playlist that talk about the scan gauges and scan tools. You can have a look at that so that you can work out what they do, what they don't do, and which one suits you. There's a video for you. Thanks for watching. Butter bing, butter boom. I hope you understand the load reading a bit more now. Engine needs to be warmed up. Accessories need to be switched off, in particular the air con, as you can see how it affects the reading. You'll have a little heart failure if you put new injectors in, you leave your aircon on and you check your load reading. So don't let that happen. That's why you wait to the end so you get that warning so it doesn't happen to you. Hey everybody, if you learnt something or you liked the video, you know, hit the like button so it comes up in your feed. Might help you miss another, not miss another video. And if you really like it and you've got your Google account there, subscribe, turn the bell on and we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.